We are now moving to um, the superintendent's report, and you have five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. All right, we're going to do this a little <laughs> backwards. Um, I'm not going to do my, my introduction. I'm just going to start with Mr. Salters because we're going to do the financial things first, and then uh, we'll get to the, you'll note 11.3 is the update, so we'll uh, handle it that way. So, Mr. Salters. Thank you, Dr. Little. Uh, members of the board, uh, tonight we're pleased to uh, bring to you our um, annual comprehensive uh, financial report and also our um, annual procurement audit, the results of these um, two, and uh, these were conducted by Burkett, Burkett, and Burkett CPAs. Uh, we have Matthew Hodges here representing the firm uh, to discuss the um, audit findings. So I'll turn it over to Matthew. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Little, thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, tonight, I'm here to uh, present our required audit communications, present a summary of the fiscal year 2021 uh, financial statements and address any questions that you may have. Uh, first, our required audit communications, the school district is responsible for preparing the financial statements, for designing, implementing, and maintaining internal controls, both over financial reporting and compliance, as well as compliance with laws, regulations, contracts, and grant agreements. Our firm is responsible for performing our audits in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards, governmental auditing standards, and the uniform guidance. In our audit, we tested the district's transactions based on our knowledge of the district. Uh, we used professional judgment in determining sample size uh, for our testing, and we designed uh, those tests for reasonable but not absolute assurance, uh, so we're not testing 100% of transactions. Uh, in doing so, we did not note any instances of noncompliance with district policies. We have issued four clean opinions uh, first, an unmodified or clean opinion in relation to the financial statements themselves. Secondly, we did not identify any uh, deficiencies in internal controls over financial reporting that were considered to be material to the financial statements. Third, an unmodified opinion uh, in relation to compliance on your major federal awards. Uh, those major federal awards for fiscal year 2021 were the ESSER 1 and 2 funds, uh, the Supporting Effective Instruction or Title II funds, and the Child Nutrition Cluster. Um, overall, and I know this is on the slide, but just to let you know, the um, federal expenditures were up about $10 million compared to the prior year, and the funds that we audited accounted for about 90% of that increase. Okay. Um, and lastly, uh, an unmodified or clean opinion in relation to compliance with the district's procurement policies and procedures. Our procurement audit covered the period of fiscal year 2021, uh, and the objective of that was to determine whether the district's procurement procedures and practice complied with the district's procurement code. Our, our audit followed the South Carolina State Fiscal Accountability Authority's questionnaire for evaluating internal controls over procurement. Again, the procurement audit involves sampling. Uh, so we looked at a two-month sample of procurement card purchases. We looked at a block sample of 200 numerical purchase orders. Uh, five disposals and sales of surplus property. Uh, on that next bullet point, it does say 42. I uh, want to let you know tonight that is um, uh, an error. That should say 60 procurement transactions. There was additional testing done. Um, we have provided an updated procurement audit report to management to reflect that change. And you have that report at your uh, place. Uh, five procurements were related to major construction, uh, as well as any change orders from those construction projects. We also reviewed 100% of sole source and emergency procurements, as well as unauthorized procurements. And in uh, our procurement audit, we did find, again, that the district complied with its procurement requirements in all material respects. In the financial audit, uh, there were no significant changes in accounting policies during fiscal year 2021. Uh, there was one reporting change that was required uh, under generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, that's in relation to your student activity funds in prior years, those have been reported as fiduciary funds in your financial reports. Uh, this change required that that be presented as special revenue funds. So for fiscal year 21 and going forward, that will be the presentation of the student activity funds. That change did result in some of the schedules that you're used to seeing in the report are no longer uh, required to be presented. Uh, also, I did want to mention uh, for next year, fiscal year 2022, um, that there's a statement that will involve leases, and that will uh, have a change in the government-wide financial statements and disclosures regarding the district's lease uh, agreements. 
In our audit, uh, we did not have any disagreements with management, not aware of any consultations with any other independent accountants as a second opinion. Uh, no issues uh, were discussed prior to our retention as your independent auditor. Uh, there were, again, no significant difficulties encountered in performing our audit, and we did receive full cooperation from your personnel. I just want to uh, express our thanks to uh, all of the employees of the finance office uh, listed on the screen there, as well as the procurement office, and really uh, everyone in the district. It's a, a truly very comprehensive audit uh, involving many different areas of the, the district, and so, uh, again, just want to say we received full cooperation in performing our audit. Looking at the financial information, and that should not have the word draft up there, it is final. Uh, the general fund balance increased by $12.6 million in fiscal year 2021. In comparison to the prior year, general fund revenues increased by about $9 million, the majority of that being from local property taxes due to reassessment. Also, there was a million dollar uh, increase in state funding uh, related to teacher salary increases and fringe benefits. The expenditures compared to the prior year increased just under $5 million. Uh, that was mostly due to salary increases to employees, um, and that did include a, a one-time bonus that was approved by the board in December of 2020. Uh, and there was also increases in insurance premiums and retirement benefits during the year. The general fund balance as of June 30th was $78.5 million. That includes prepaid items of $1 million, assignments for the fiscal year 2022 budget of $7.5 million, and the unassigned general fund balance was right at $70 million. That unassigned general fund balance represents just under 25% of total general fund expenditures. Uh, the district's policy requires a minimum of 7% of general fund budget to be held in fund balance. Uh, just as a point of comparison, uh, the GFOA does require a minimum, or not require, recommends a minimum of 16.7% or about two months worth of expenditures to be in unassigned general fund balance. The uh, South Carolina Department of Education requires uh, half of that, 8.3% or one month to be in uh, unassigned general fund balance. And so um, you're in compliance with those requirements. Uh, overall, the total uh, governmental fund balances were just under $266 million as of June 30th. And so to conclude, I uh, wanted to say that the district is uh, in excellent financial position uh, due to your leadership as the board, uh, your superintendent, as well as your senior leadership. Uh, your bond ratings have been reaffirmed. Those are the same as uh, they were in the prior year, both Standard and Poor's and Moody's. Uh, the assignment of general fund balance is a good practice to have, as well as uh, the certificates of excellence of financial reporting. This is the 27th consecutive year uh, for fiscal year 2021 that the district has received this prestigious award from ASBO, as well as the 26th consecutive year of receiving the award from GFOA. Uh, they have their own reviewers who go through the district's financial reports and ensure that they're in compliance. Um, and so the district will certainly be commended uh, for all their efforts in receiving those awards. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding our audits. Um. This is Jada, hey, thank you for that. Um, on page three. Where, which, which, um, is it, which report are we looking at? We are looking at the, um, the CAFR, okay. the annual financial report. Um, it says that school principals may request transfers of appropriations within their school. Uh, transfers of appropriations, however, require the special approval of the superintendent and must re be reported to the board for their review and acceptance. I know that I haven't ever accepted anything like that. I'm just curious, is this something that there just are no transfers? Or is this just not a step that we take? I'm sorry, I was trying to find that. You said that's on, okay, I see it in the transmittal letter. School principals may request transfers appropriations. I believe that's within their own school budgets. That's right, and uh, we, see, we give you our monthly report um, in this month's agenda, it's item 13.2. Uh, monthly general fund budget transfers to show any transfers within the general fund. Okay, so when it says we accept that, does that just mean we just receive it? We don't have to approve it? Yes, ma'am, you receive the report. Okay. And let's see here. On page 37, Uh, 
under blended component units. We went over this last year um, where it says the Lexington County, I'm right now here under um, the Educational Foundation, which is number two. It says that our board approves all appointments to the foundation board, but we don't. Um, last year it was changed to read three members of the Lexington County School District One Board of Trustees are members of the foundation board, which is the governing authority for the foundation. Right, and I'm not sure why that wasn't changed in the current year copy. Um, I think we can get that updated as well. Okay, that's fine, thank you. And I guess this is a question for Dr. Little. When will we adopt the 2021 procurement code? Mr. Salters, you wanna handle that? Yeah, um, so we're in the process now of um, evaluating that code and, and writing um, guidelines associated with that code. Uh, and we, we look to uh, bring that to you guys this spring to start that process. Um, there, we have to be uh, substantially similar to the state code. Um, and so there, it's, a, you know, it's a process we have to go through and update all of our regulations, guidelines uh, to meet that. So we're, um, we're gonna be working on that this spring and bringing that to you. Okay, our, our goal is to have um, the next fiscal year starting under that code. Okay. And it, you know, I, I should point out, um, and, and Mr. Hodges did as, as well, but uh, you did note that um, this is the procurement audit was an annual audit based on feedback you guys gave last year um, to, to do a, a yearly audit versus the three-year audit that had been done previously. So um, I did just want to point that out, that we will continue to do that yearly process under the new code as well. Thank you. Did you have a question, Kyle? Yeah, just for a point of clarity, it says property tax revenues increased 10.66% due to a 10-year required reassessment of property values. It, does that occur in line with the census? Is, is it on the, the 20, 30, 40? It does not. It does not, okay, okay. So I've got another question. This might be for you, Mr. Salters. On page 24, under the Capital Asset and Debt Administration, it says that we used, um, the district also issued non-referendum short-term bonds for certain capital needs during the current year to fund renovations and repairs, the acquisition of school buses, and acquisition of information technology. However, when we voted on that back in August of 2020, there was not a line item there for school buses. I'm just curious how that was decided. I'll have to go back and pull that information and, and get you an answer on that. I'm just curious, okay. I'll have to compare what we said in there. Okay. I'll note that, page 24. Just for a reminder, where are we at with the uh, LOSF, the, the whole transition with, with the um, property? The lease purchase agreements, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. Um, we have 2032, 2031, I think, is, is about the time. We, we have about 10 years, eight, 19 years left on that. Okay. Um, I think that's, um, Right, I, I can get you an exact. Yeah, I, I, I could not remember if it was yeah. anticipating the next five years or if it was the next 10. Thank you. All right. Miss Henson, do you know what the LOSF is? Were you part of the board when we talked about that last year? Mr. Salford, would you, would you? I know that's a, a weird topic that we have to talk about every now and then. Could you explain what that is? Sure, that was a, that was a funding um, mechanism used uh, by a number of districts across the state uh, years ago, um, and it, it was basically called a, a, a lease purchase arrangement. Um, where you, you set up a, uh, a corporation um, and the district essentially is leasing the building, leasing to own, if you will, from that corporation. 
it's a financing strategy that the General Assembly um, later remove um, from districts and uh, require districts to go out for general obligation bond votes uh, to the uh, community. Um, Dr. Little, before we move on, I did want to just take, take a point to thank our staff. Uh, finance staff is back here in the corner. Um, our directors and, and all have spent hours and hours and hours uh, pulling together these statements, and, and I can't thank them enough for all the uh, effort that they put into this work and, and these you know 26 and 27 consecutive years of um, acknowledgement and, and bond ratings uh, maintained through this time that we're in is a testament to um, the board's commitment to financial responsibility, our staff's commitment to it as well, and so we really appreciate all the work that they've done. So if you don't mind, share with me. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you, sir.